So, climate change. There are actually a number of potential outcomes to climate change. The reality, I know we've all heard the, the typical story of you know, increased heating throughout the earth and rising ocean sea levels. Ocean, sea levels, ocean levels, rising, rising oceans. But there are other potential outcomes. Basically, the way climate change works is it's a big can of worms. We know it's a can, we know it's big, and we know it contains a lot of worms. And we know we're opening it. But we don't know how many worms it has or what kind of worms it has or exactly where they're all going to go. So the best anybody can really do, and there are people a lot smarter than me and much more informed on climate science who are trying to work this out, but even for those people, it's still really a guessing game. They just know big can of worms and we're opening it. So there is a seldom discussed possibility for how climate change could turn out. And it is, it is this, global warming, the increase in temperatures caused by the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere may actually trigger an ice age. I am not kidding. And I'm going to explain how this could happen. One of the main factors, possibly the main factor that differentiates between Earth is tending toward ice ages or not, is actually the placement of the continents on Earth. At times in the past when tectonics have arranged the continents more around the equator, Earth tends to be much hotter because the continents, the land masses, um, absorb the sun's energy and then release it again as heat into the atmosphere. When the continents are rearranged so that they are primarily within northern and southern polar regions, they tend to form ice, glaciers, Glaciers reflect sunlight back out into space rather than turning it into heat and releasing it, releasing it into the atmosphere, which causes a snowball effect, pun intended, which tends to decrease the temperature of Earth and increase the number of glaciers. Other factors influence this, like the presence of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which can trap what heat is released, and other things can also influence it. But it's the important thing here is to remember the placement of land masses on Earth makes a big difference in whether Earth tends toward glaciation or not. Now, right now, Earth is kind of in an in-between scenario. It has land masses near both poles, but it also has quite a bit of land mass around the equator. So Earth can kind of go both ways. And that's what it's been doing for quite a while now. There will be thousands of years of glaciation along with usually shorter periods of interglacials like we're living in now when Earth is warmer and the glaciers recede. It is almost certain that eventually we're going to have another ice age because of the layout of the continents. There's no way to know for sure how long this is going to take or when it's going to happen, but it is very likely to happen again. It's almost certain to happen again in the future. There are several factors that have been um, contributing to the relatively warm period we're having now. The reason we're not currently in an ice age. A couple of those are the jet stream, which is uh, a high altitude, high velocity current of air. Um, in the upper atmosphere, and the Gulf Stream, which is a current of water. Now, the Gulf Stream carries warmth from the Gulf of Mexico up along the coastline of North America, and then across and down the European coastline. It is one of the main reasons that uh, Great Britain and Newfoundland and Northern Europe and Northern parts of Canada are not glaciated. It allows them to have relatively mild winters in which their snow melts off. And then winter come, or uh, mild summers, I should say. Mild summers in which their snow melts off. Then winter returns, snow falls, summer comes, it melts off. If the Gulf Stream were diverted, so it was not delivering warmth to those northern areas, the snow wouldn't fully melt during the summer, and over time you would begin to build up glaciers on those land masses. Britain, Newfoundland, Scandinavia, and uh, 
northern Canada would all start to be unlivable within probably a relatively short period of time. Diversion of the Gulf Stream is one potential effect of glacial runoff. Yes, it is true, the melting of the glaciers may lead to glaciation. I know. But the way it works is, as the glaciers run off, they may reduce the temperature of the ocean in those northern regions enough, kind of change the, the mixture of the oceans, so that the Gulf Stream is diverted. Another effect of the increased energy in the atmosphere, because of global warming, because of carbon dioxide trapping heat, is weakening and diversion of the jet stream. That happened this year, this past year, I should say. That, that happened in the winter of 2013 and 14, when almost all of the United States was really cold. Everybody had a really bad winter. That was because of weakening of the jet stream because of global warming. So yes, global warming made you cold. It's true. And it may make you a lot colder. If this is not just an anomaly that the jet stream was weakened and moved further south, it could become a pattern. Winters could become longer for people in the northern regions of the United States. Um, growing seasons could become shorter. Summers could be cooler. We could be in the beginning of an ice age. And the reason the ice age could be beginning now is because of global warming. It's hard to understand. And I think that's one of the reasons, very likely, you rarely ever hear it because scientists think a population that doesn't understand the difference between there, there, and there probably can't understand how global warming can lead to an ice age. But it can. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you will like it and subscribe and watch other videos and leave comments and all kinds of good stuff. Until next time.